All right, I'm T.W. Dawson. I'm joined with the dream team of Punk Panda. We have the CEO, we have Marcus, we have Craig and his team. You see, you got the big, big panda bear up there. Jump into the chats, let us know where you're calling in from. I see Oregon, I see New York, I see Australia, I see Pennsylvania, I see South Carolina, I see Oregon, I see all over the world. There's people coming in from Malaysia, all parts of the world, Canada, British Columbia, Australia, Malaysia. Everywhere. Listen, guys, we're so excited about this call. This is a call that most guys have been waiting for. We've been waiting, 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 and we have some amazing announcements. I don't want to hold up any more time, but I will. I do want to turn it over to Marcus right now so we can start the party. Let's go. TW, I'm Panda Pumped. Everybody, listen up. <laughs> we got a great call for you guys. We got 15 slides of absolute power packed information about what's going on. Now, I'm going to push up the PowerPoint. We're going to get into it. Our first two speakers are going to absolutely knock your socks off. So bolt those babies down. Here we go. I hope you're ready. If you're not, too bad. You're going to have to watch the recording because we are straight into it. So corporate update. Here we are, 8th and 9th of June. And the things we're going to go through, Decryption Labs, we're going to get into some content around our token listing got a vip guest speaker going to introduce you to today we're going to touch on the panda academy panda 11 the panda blitz marketing date is locked and loaded the ppm pancake listing date is locked loaded and arc welded into our calendar and it cannot will not change we're going to give you an update on the panda app we're going to show you some of the punk panda merchandise and so for our first speaker, we're going to introduce Crypto Craig. But before we do, I just want to set the scene. What we decided to do, because we've had some uh, things that have held us up with the Panda app going into the iOS store and also Google Play, and we did not want to be held hostage any longer um, for our token listing. So we've decided to move forward and positioning some of the incredible uh, products and services that we are bringing to the market outside of the app for the marketing side um, for the listing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be leading with the Panda 11 Crypto Sports Fantasy, the Panda Academy, and the Panda Game. That allows us to put a solid listing date in place. It's most likely the app will certainly be uh, out and functioning in all app stores well before the listing anyway, but it allows us to get our marketing into play and uh, for you guys to have a exact date for the listing of the tokens. So with that, I'll hand over to Crypto Craig. Tell us what's been going on, my friend. Over to you. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for the intro. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, fantastic. So, guys, we got a lot to cover and not a whole lot of time. So, we'll kick it off with our Panda Head. It is here. Uh, this hey. may mean one thing and one thing only. And that means that the Panda Academy Education Series has kicked off. And uh, we've been recording the last couple of days. Got some really good content. We'll touch upon that here in just a second, but I want to go over a couple of updates first uh, and let you guys know what's going on. So we have a special guest who I'll introduce in just a second here. Uh, this is my partner, or one of them in Decryption Labs. His name is Michael Kimmelman, and he's way more big time than me. Uh, so I think you guys will, will enjoy his story and, and kind of really like appreciate where he's coming from as an educator. But uh, we want to touch on a couple other things first. And so most importantly is that we're actually like well ahead of schedule with the NFT uh, founder series in the game. So um, just to give you guys like an idea of what's happening in the crypto markets, uh, it's a little bit of a mess right now. Like people, not just the crypto markets, like, you know, in the world, like people are pretty nervous right now. Capital's drying up a little bit, but everyone's looking for an opportunity and they're looking for something really cool in the crypto space that they can do. There's been a couple of black eyes, if you will, um, not just in DeFi, but in crypto in general. And it really hasn't been great for the space. So. People are looking for something cool. They're looking for something new and they're looking for something that they can make money with and actually earn by playing and doing cool stuff. So it, I think there's a few different narratives in crypto that are going on right now. Uh, last summer was DeFi summer and it was NFTs and that's still there and they're still very early, but now we're moving to like play to earn using NFTs. And what's happening is everyone that you know did really well or minted NFTs uh, did a series of the pictures that you probably see online over the last, you know, nine months to a year are now like trying to backtrack and figure out how do we add utility to these things so that the price doesn't just drop and we can actually like incentivize the community to do cool stuff. And so they're trying to like scramble and figure some of that out now. 
And a lot of them really will then attach a token to it that has no utility, no use, and there's not much to do. Um, one of the projects that, that did it really, really well, uh, really changed the space a bit, was a project called Axie Infinity. So Axie Infinity was a, a play-to-earn game using NFTs that you could earn tokens in, and it absolutely shattered tons of records, um, not only in the NFT, but in the crypto space. They had tons of users, and it really wasn't that cool. Like, it wasn't that great of a use. Um, like the gaming piece was just like very jaded. It, it was nothing like some of the games you see today. Um, and so we have the fortunate event to like study from the past, learn from some of their mistakes, see what's working, and they created here. So we have created uh, 10,000 pandas. We're releasing the original 1,800 plus um, as the founder series uh, to kick it off here. Um, but it's really cool. It's based around a few different elements. Um, our lead game developer kind of worked backwards. He, he already created all the traits and attributes that all the different pandas will have. And, you know, on top of that, he also created an amazing way to like up your characters, like health in a game. So like if they eat bamboo, they get stronger. So when it's time to actually like battle the pandas or do like fight them against each other in a very like cartoonish game like way, where you can earn money. You know, that panda is stronger than the other ones. Like if, if yours has a sword instead of, you know, the nunchucks, it's more powerful than the other one. So it really creates this cool game opportunity where not only can you, you know, mint an NFT and, you know, get an NFT for yourself or, or get multiple, but you can actually, while the game is being built up until then, and then even afterwards, do certain actions and things, which we'll show you all about, that can actually like make it stronger and make it more valuable in the game, which will earn you more currency later. And so that's really where things are going. But a lot of projects didn't do that with that in mind. We are. So we're kind of started with the game and we're working backwards to make all the traits of the NFTs really sink in and really cool. So um, there's a lot, you know, we understand we're a worldwide company. People around the world are going to be excited about this. So, you know, we, we really try to incorporate different traits and a couple of different ideas that really will capture different groups around the world. And I think it's going to be very, very appealing. The art is fantastic. They're like 3D high quality, like 4K vector pandas that look amazing. Um, they're not like some of these jump arts, like, you know, or like the pixelated things that you might see with crypto punks and things like that. Like these things look really amazing. And you've seen some of them here. We're just really taking that to the next level and giving them traits and giving them cool characteristics that actually mean something in the real world where people can utilize them and do it. Why is this all important? Uh, well, A, is because we're ahead of schedule with this and it's great and it gives utility to the PPM token but also it gives people a way to earn money. Um, like people that are just speculating on a picture of an NFT, you know, that's cool when the market's going up, but if it doesn't have any utility, that's not gonna stick. The floor price is gonna fall out. Where here, if you know you're gonna use it for something in the future that will actually earn you tokens in PPM, in a cryptocurrency with a large community, that's very exciting. So we're expecting it to do very good and have great sales, but also be able to have a nice buildup going into the game where people can actually play and earn cryptocurrency. And that really is the goal here to drive the utility of this, get people excited and keep the PPM token, give it reasons for people to use it. And so that's where the game's at. We're, like I said, well ahead of schedule with that. And we'll give you guys more update. It deserves its own call once we're ready to show you all the different traits and updates on it. And we'll walk you through that. Um, but that's really, really important. And it's awesome. Now we're not just a messaging app. We're so much more. And it, it gives utility to the PPM token. Whatever we can do to drive utility and increase the token price. It's really like a you know a benefactor of doing the right thing and giving it utility. The token price has to go up if demand increases. And that is the plan here. And because Marcus and crew have done such a good job of already growing the community and we expect it to grow, you know, by the supply and demand laws of the world, the price you know would have to increase. You know, if all things given are great. So very excited about that. But again, getting back into the utility of PPM and you know what. The reason people would like use this token to give it more utility we wanted to kind of kill two birds at once and so we know how important it is for people to be able to you know buy the token for people to know how to set up a wallet for people to know how to stake it to get the rewards and do all the cool things that we can do um, but we understand it's confusing a lot of people this will be their first introduction into crypto and we wanted to make it as easy as humanly possible given that crypto is pretty difficult so we knew that that takes education so for the last two days, uh, you know, we've been working on it before this, but recording the last two days, uh, my partner, Michael, and I have put together the Panda Academy. Uh, it's 20 videos uh, with some other, you know, great information below as well that you can have documentation for and checklists. And we're building it right now. So we were in the studio last two days recording. 
That's why we got the panda head. That's why we have these ill-fitting shirts that we had made up because we were in a pinch. We wanted to get this done because we want to get the education to you guys. And uh, it just went really well. Uh, we are literally covering, covering everything from, you know, what is Bitcoin and all up to, you know, what are NFTs and DeFi, some of the more confusing stuff. And we even touch on trading strategies, some of the biggest mistakes we made. And education is so incredibly important, especially when the market's like it is right now, because people are either down and or getting bad information or, or trying to pump a token that's already way too down that they're kind of holding the back for and hoping it goes up. So uh, with that said, I want to introduce my partner here, uh, Michael Kimmelman. So he won't tell you this because he's too nice and too humble, but Mike's the best-selling New York Times author. Um, you know, he wrote a book called Confessions of a Wall Street Insider. He was originally, you know, worked on in New York at, with one of the top law firms, basically got bored, <laughs> wanted to make more money, so transitioned into Wall Street as a trader, killed it there as one of the top traders, and decided to start his own hedge fund with a quarter billion dollars he raised. So like, it was cool because I'm a crypto degenerate and I learned on YouTube and stuff and by messing up, he came from the real world and took it into crypto in 2014. And he was fortunate enough to work with the founder of the Bitcoin Foundation, Charlie Schramm. So he was big time. He's one of the guys I learned from and he saved me from trading all my money into zero. And uh, so he's been recording with us and I wanted Mike to say hi, tell a little bit about his story, but which I kind of just gave it away. But uh, you know, also let you guys know what we've been working on the last few days and kind of what the gist of the education is and why we think it's going to save you a ton of time and headaches in your career. Appreciate that. Hey, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, Craig and I were talking today. There's actually a really interesting story around that, and that's that education. And again, I'm going to date myself a little bit. You see the gray in the beard. It was a different timeline when I was coming up in the industry. And by the industry, I mean law and Wall Street. So back in the day, I had to get a three-year law degree. I went for a postgrad degree in finance, a chartered financial analyst degree. That was a three-year degree. I got multiple securities licenses as well. And that was all really just to interview and try to get a job on Wall Street. <laughs> and none of what I did when I went through all of that and started interviewing with some of these bigger firms some of the hedge funds and whatnot, none of it mattered what I could do. All people wanted to see was what were my credentials? What's your pedigree? What school did you go to? You know, what degrees do you have? It had nothing to do with who I was or what I knew. And so I don't think you guys maybe comprehend yet how lucky we are to live in the timeline we live in today, where you don't have to spend, again, 50, 60, $70,000 a year on a degree. You don't have to go for another three-year degree and spend another $100,000. There are so many good free resources today, and especially what Craig and I did today over the next two days, the last two days, and what we're going to produce there are just in volumes of the encyclopedic material that basically gives you guys the power to go out and learn a new trait, a new field, a new industry, and to do it and time collapse it in a way that's so short and so quick compared to what I had to do and inexpensive, to be frank. So, you know, I, I think what the point is, is that networks, and education and knowledge have replaced all this old school credentialism. So if you want to get involved in crypto, if you want to do a startup company or get involved in a project or do something entrepreneurial, you no longer need permission from the right schools, the right people, the right firms. And that's such a big part of crypto in that it's this open permissionless system that anybody can get involved in. All you need is the effort, the commitment, and the desire to do it. And you too can be, honestly, somebody like Charlie Schrem, my old partner, who didn't go for a degree in crypto or tech or anything <laughs> like that. He's a self-taught guy. Craig, probably 90% of what you know in crypto, and this guy knows more than almost anybody I know, is all self-taught and done in a really quick way. And that's one thing I love about the Punk Panda Project and what they're doing is that it's community-based, it's knowledge-based. You don't have to have a specialized degree. It's open to everyone. And it's all about some of the principles that really mean something to me, like privacy and liberty, community and trust. Anybody who's read the papers or been alive for the last few years knows that there's just a collapse of trust in institutions and in governments and politicians and that networks, trusted networks and communities are replacing that. And I love the fact that this community is, is so big on all of those principles and bringing everybody else into the space to be able to do these types of things. So. I'm excited to be here. Uh, well, yeah, he flew yeah. in just to do this. He's flying out tomorrow. I'm sure he'll be back soon. Uh, and we did, a, I think, a really great job of, uh, it wasn't just Crypto 101, 
it was really, you know, crypto 101 with insane stories and experience that will like shave time off your learning curve. And we dig into some of the tough stuff. Like what I really love about Punk Panda and the opportunity that we had here is um, when you get into DeFi, which is decentralized finance, it's literally one of the hardest topics to cover in the world. It's one of the hard. It took me a long time. It took me set, it took me three years to explain to my mother what Bitcoin was, which is like digital gold, right? Um, but it took me like three years to get that down rather than some confusing stuff. We cover DeFi, but we don't just do DeFi and talk about all the different parts of decentralized finance. We actually get to show you through how PPM token works, how you can actually swap how you can actually stake and earn some rewards, how you can actually provide liquidity and actually create a market for other people to buy and sell the token. So you actually get to learn by doing while like helping the project that you're working with and sharing with others and earning crypto anyway. So something we're very excited about. I appreciate you sharing. Uh, we're kind of just getting started with it, but we have a whole lot of documentation that's going to come along with it. And we're excited to, to have you guys on board. I think it's really, really going to help you. I really wish I had this when I was getting started or even a couple of years down the line. So with that said, I know we've been flapping our gums for a bit here. Um, I just want to talk for a second about Panda 11, the crypto fantasy sports app. Um, I really am proud that these guys put together a robust system that is more than just a messaging app because we all know technology can take forever and there's always bugs. Something always happens in technology. So we're not like a one you know, legged chair. We have multiple legs that we can shift and move to and change strategies as we need to because there's so much here. At first, I almost thought it was going to be like a little too much, but the more that I started to learn about it, it kind of all fits in sequence because you know now we have a, a cool product that's free that brings people in. Then we have NFTs, you know, then we also have gaming, but now we have the crypto fantasy sports, and that drives a lot of money. And it's very important to know like how much money people spend on this kind of thing, um, how it's like very gamified, and how you know we're able to shift gears and kind of lead with this messaging. It probably hits a broader market than you would with just with a messaging app, or maybe then you even would with NFTs. It's a big space. And so we're excited to dive more into that. Um, I'm going to let these guys kind of cover what they want to share with the Panda 11 Crypto Fantasy Sports. But thank you so much for having us. We hope it helped. It means a lot. We appreciate you letting us be your educators. We'll pass it back to you, Marcus. Wow. Craig, I'm always pumped and have to peel myself <laughs> off the ceiling after you finish speaking. But you know what? We're just forever and eternally grateful that we're having incredible people who are coming to the project and, and wanting to work with us. I mean, we've got Crypto Craig, we've got Jedi Josh, and now we've got Master Mike. So, Mike, we've Master got Mike. You, uh, you partnering with us to share some of your educational magic. And uh, I'm looking forward to looking at this educational series that you guys have been filming. So thanks again for joining us today and looking forward to working together as we move forward. So, guys, um, I'm going to now hand over to our CEO, Albert Muir, um, to talk about Panda 11, because as we mentioned, the marketing uh, collateral that's going to be coming out uh, from the uh, agency that we've engaged, they've had to now go into actually adapting that marketing collateral, those marketing pieces to focus front and center Panda 11, uh, because, of course, a lot of people are going to be excited about a new token listing, and they want to know you know, what dollars are going to be driving the speculation on this token. So, Albert, do we have you on the call today? Yes, you do. Thank you very much. Great job, Craig. Great job, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, when Panda 11 was, first came across my desk many months ago, I got so excited. I immediately called my partners and I was talking to them. And we didn't even have the app launched at this, uh, the messaging app launched at this time. So they're saying, oh, just wait, 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 wait. And I said, we can't wait. There's a situation here where it's, it's available now. It may not be available later. We got to act on this now. And um, they kind of poo-pooed it. And then I finally got them to agree to listen to me do a formal presentation. Well, within 15 minutes of that presentation, they could not send me the money fast enough to make sure that we secured this. That's how exciting Panda 11 was for people that didn't even want to listen to it at, in, the, in the beginning. And the reason is, is that you quickly realize that what we're doing is we're giving the players value, value, value that they can't get anywhere else because this is the world's first crypto sports fantasy app. And it has the same team. Many of you already know this from previously because it was launched on Christmas. And then from that point on, the people that built it, they were no longer needed. But the people that were doing some other things, it was required for them to help us on the messaging app. So it's kind of sat there. We wanted to get the messaging app out. 
But listen to the excitement of this. The team that built this and marketed it and developed it and did all the market um, uh, branding, they built Dream 11 in the country of India up to 80 million subscribers. That's an un. The, the owner there makes anywhere from a quarter of a million to a million dollars every single day on the matches that they're having. Now, how do we give our players value, value, value? Is that in most of the Asian countries, well, almost all of them, sports fantasy, uh, fantasy sports is considered a skill. It's not considered gambling. And they step in and they tax this revenue based on the fiat. That's the key word, the fiat that was collected. Well, let's just use the country of India, for example. If rate, which is about 20%, that's the going rate uh, uh, for almost every sports fantasy crypto app that's out there. And then the government steps in and takes a 33% tax. That means the winner is going to take home $470. Now, if you win $1,000 on Panda 11, you're going to walk home with $800. Now, how long... Once we start operating, do you think the word is going to spread like wildfire to all these other people, which just on one platform is over 80 million, for them to switch over and be engaged in an app that works better, that's faster, and you take home almost twice as much money? So this is going to go very, very quick because we're giving value to the actual players. And as Craig was saying, it's my belief that Panda 11, up until about a week ago, Panda 11 would be our number one revenue generator. It's a true revenue. And many of you know me from the past. And if you have never heard me say this before, if you're looking at a crypto project and you're saying, is this a good thing or not? Well, to answer that question, just say, hey, I'm going to take the crypto out and I'm going to put fiat in. And if they just ran this business based on fiat, would it be a good project? If you can answer yes to that, you've probably stumbled yourself into a very good crypto project, okay? So the answer to us would be yes, Panda 11 would be very successful if it wasn't operating on crypto. But based it, based on it operating on crypto, we can make it so much better. And how much more proud can you be than we are the world's first crypto fantasy uh, sports app? So the utility, I've always believed that this would be the largest revenue generator and use the most PPM tokens out of any of the products that we ever introduced to the market. However, I am having second thoughts with the new game that's coming along. So when that game, it'll be able to rival this, which is absolutely fantastic because we're going to have two huge utility revenue generators within the next six months. So I could not be more excited because now we actually get to do a listing. When people look at this uh, in the outside world, that are just investing into crypto and looking for crypto projects, they're going to be super excited about this. This is a win-win-win situation. We're entering the market at the exact right time. Cannot wait for July 8th. Thank you. Let me turn this back over to Marcus. Fantastic, Albert. And before I let you go, um, you know, the, the, the gamification of crypto sports fantasy is bringing a lot of young people into sport and, and online games. And so I know I haven't cleared this with you, but Panda 11 has given us the chance to introduce our first female panda. Would you like to introduce her? I would love to see it. Yes, let's do it. Let's go and do it today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lily. Lily is an, her little brother. His name is Champ. And Champ is a sports fantasy enthusiast. And there's going to be a love story. Lily has a boyfriend. She has a little brother that's Champ. He's always in trouble. He's running out on the field and things like that. And it's going to be a story that's compiled to follow along with Panda 11. And then eventually Champ will be the iconic brand for Panda, Panda 11. So this is our very first female uh, punk panda. And we, we could not be more happy with the outturn of this here. And soon we'll be showing you, uh, soon Champ will be created. And we'll be introducing that to the market here very soon. And Champ is the one that we're after. But we have a love story where they meet at a match. And uh, so she's very in love with this guy. And she's always got to carry her brother around. And the two of them are always getting Champ out of trouble because he is into everything. <laughs> so uh, with that, let me turn it back to you, Marcus. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks very much. So this is Lily, um, everyone. Now, um, you know, like uh, Josh, sorry, Josh, Crypto Craig and uh, Master Mike were talking about, you know, the Panda Academy 
is so important because as this uh, slogan says, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Ben Franklin, what would he know? Well, his head's on the $100 bill in the US, so I guess he knows something about money. So crypto education, you know, one thing I've always loved about the direct selling industry that I've grown up through over the last 25 years is that knowledge and education is something that nobody can take it away from you. It not only that, it gives you an edge. When you're talking, the minute you open your mouth, people will listen to you more if they hear value coming out of your mouth. And when you have that knowledge, you have more courage to take action. It removes the fear for you making decisions that can put you in a better financial position. So giving yourself that higher confidence and that higher level of competency will not only give you higher value in the market, it'll put more dollars in your back pocket. So this is something which is going to bring huge value to people who come to the Panda uh, ecosystem, uh, no matter how they arrive here. And some people will come here because of that. So I'm excited about that. Let's move on to the pancake listing. Um, we are going to start the Panda Blitz marketing on June the 24th. We needed a couple of weeks to adapt and uh, put together um, the change of direction for the marketing collateral. So that starts on June the 24th. That means that we will have a listing date for the token Friday, July the 8th. All right. So that's when the token is going to be available for the public to be able to purchase the token. The contract address will not be given until after the listing. And because the fact of uh, we're going to be starting to do public marketing on June the 24th, the pre-sale on the Panda Farm will end midnight Indian Standard Time, June the 23rd. So there'll be a two to three week time period where nobody can buy the token. They'll have to wait until it's listed and buy the token once it's listed at $1.50 on Pancake Swap. So the goal here is for us to go to the market with a marketing strategy that really captures the power of crypto sports fantasy with Panda 11, the value of the Panda Academy, the NFT Panda game coming down the pipe, the Panda app coming soon. So we really want to have a buzz and a retail interest around this token to really put some upward pressure on that token when we list come July the 8th. So again, it is locked, it is loaded, and nothing and no one can stand in our way this time of hitting that date. So just uh, wrapping up on the token, we know we started the pre-sale October 29th at 10 cents. We scaled it through to a dollar. The token price, we're now going to hold it at a dollar 20. It will not go above that through the Panda Farm. We'll list it at a dollar 50 on July the 8th. We've got over 88,000 registrations on Panda Farm. To give you a little bit of perspective, Bitcoin was at $62,000 when we started our pre-sale at 10 cents. And again, if anybody who's on this uh, call or if anybody you know wants to get this token under $1.50, they have until midnight Indian Standard Time on June the 23rd to do that. So let's now move into the, up, uh, the, the update on the Panda app. As you guys have heard, uh, Apple and Google have continued to give us moving targets. We've been moving through those. The latest one that we've rectified is that we identified a code error that was affecting the forward, the delete, and the reply. That's been fixed, and the app has been resubmitted to uh, Google, and they've actually approved it. So that should actually turn up um, with the APK for us to give to you in the coming uh, day or two. Now, another thing that happened is that we actually negotiated to main, maintain our strict privacy policy. And, you know, um, Mike said it really well. He said there's been a collapse of trust just out there in the world and also with messaging apps. And, and would you believe um, both Apple and Google came to us and said, listen, um, because of our hate speech and uh, everybody's, you know, you know getting, uh, you know, really, really uh, into that sort of thing, we want you guys to monitor these 1,000 keywords in everybody's conversations. And if they are breached, then you'll put a red flag on those accounts. So we said, absolutely not. We will not, uh, we will, we will not compromise on our privacy uh, for our members. And so we're happy to say um, that we managed to uh, form an agreement where instead of having to do that, um, when you click on a message, you'll see forward delete reply and we managed to negotiate a fourth option, which is report. 
So instead of us having to monitor as a company, everyone's conversations like most app companies do, we can allow the users to do that. If someone sends you a, uh, you know, a hateful message, you can hold your finger on the message, you can report that message, and then we can um, either delete or investigate that account. So another issue we found was Agora. They are the company that's used to take care of video calls and uh, voice calls. They had to issue a new key for us for our APK, which they've now given us, and that's been included in the resubmission of the, uh, um, of the APK. Um, iOS, which is Apple, um, they wanted us to update our privacy policy. It's called e ELUA, EULA policy, which is around hate speech and this sort of stuff. And would you believe we had to submit that for 177 languages and Apple had to go through and verify that we had uh, done the correct translations for each of those 177 languages. So last we had an update uh, three days ago on this with our techs, they had approved 35 of those 177 languages. And then actually late last night, we just came in um, and got word that uh, all 177 have now been approved, which means that leads the way for our submission with Apple iOS. So again, we're in a position where we feel like we've done everything we've been asked. We have uh, submissions in ready to be locked and loaded on Google Play Store and also Apple. So that could be any day coming soon. The last thing on the app is that we've asked our techs to update the Panda Pals reporting page on punkpanda.io, which means any day now, you'll be able to go to the website, click on Panda Pals and see your Panda Pals organization, your correct number of tokens. Uh, and so that will be happening and available very soon. So we've got some merchandise, which has gone into, um, into production now. As you can see, we've got t-shirts front and back branded. Uh, we took the feedback from the community um, with the female t-shirts. We've put a V-neck in there, little logo on the front, some panda mugs with the punk panda, use it, share it, own it. Um, and also, Albert, do you want to come back on and just talk about this uh, local sponsorship where you are supporting a, a local team there in the Philippines on the basketball? Yes. As, as many of you know that uh, with the with the Philippines, it's third world country and stuff. And I ran into these guys during COVID lockdown because I've been stuck here ever since COVID happened. And uh, we've put uh, put together a team. They wanted to be sponsored. And, and these are some of the best players that I've come across that are not on varsities. They're not in colleges. Uh, they're not professionals. And true to nature, as right now, our record is 3-0. and oh, And we just started in the Summer Liga. And it just gives us great pride, you know, to assemble these young men together, to give them sponsorship and give them a place to play. And, a and concrete and chicken poop as your court and all barefoot. So not everybody's got shirts and jerseys and everything. And it just gives us great pride to be able to do that, to help uh, make difference in people's lives. So Thanks. with that, let me turn it back over, over to you. And just the other thing is, I, I would just like to tell the community, you know, we have had to move the target date several times. And for that, um, you know, the, the ever never ending saga with Apple is just unbelievable. It's just that they don't give you all 35 problems at once. They drip feed it in and drip feed it in. And then they make a change in privacy policy and then do this. You know, why didn't they tell us on day one? Somebody may ask that question. Why didn't they tell us on day one? You got to do 177 uh, different countries. Well, because they changed that policy along the way when we were doing this. So I'm just, I'm tickled pink now that we have an exact date and we can move forward together as a community. And any day now, the, the messaging app will be there. Um, all my players are anxious to download, download the messaging app and, and get that started. So away we go. Great, good work, Albert. Um, our, our Panda Bears, the first two have gone into production. So they'll be ready in about uh, four weeks time. So we're starting with uh, the Panda app as the first bear. Um, they come with these little logos talking about there's only 1,864 giant pandas left in the wild. Every purchase goes towards supporting um, panda breeding and habitat protection. We're gonna have Panda 11, of course, because that's an app that's in the market already. Um, so they're gonna be the first two bears. I'm sure there's gonna be so many people in the community who want to actually own the entire collection. In fact, the uh, lady who helped us to design this, Antonia, 
out of the United States. She's actually a designer. She's got her own uh, purse collection. She had the sample sent to hers and she goes, oh my God, I'm in love with them. Can I please keep them? And I'll say, of course, absolutely. You can, you can keep those samples. So with that, we want to say thanks so much. Thanks to uh, Crypto Craig. Thanks to Master Mike. Thank you to Albert. Um, at TW, I'm going to throw back to you for any closing comments. But uh, thanks to all of our community for staying with us during these uh, times where we've been had these delays. But we are turning the lights back on. We're moving forward. And I would not be surprised in the coming days if our app turns up into both app stores as well. And uh, that's just going to help us to take go through the whole new level as well. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Looking forward to uh, the things coming over the next few days. Over to you, TW. Wow. Wow. Talk about exciting. Talk about exciting. Let me just say this to you, community. No matter what we do in life, there's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be challenges. But notice that no matter what the obstacles are, there's always something that comes good out of this. I truly believe that none of this happened for no reason. I believe that this was the right thing to do. I believe to be able to pivot and go into something that possibly can bring more value to our company, leading with Panda 11, and also giving us the time to do the right things by the app and put all this marketing together. Craig's coming in at the right time with the, with the uh, academy, with the NFT projects, the games, all this stuff is coming up to be a perfect storm yes we wanted to do it in January yes we wanted to have it done by February but guess what things don't always work like that but the one thing we do know is as I've been speaking over the last few months educate yourself prepare yourself for the opportunity because this type of thing only comes around once in a lifetime and we have to make sure we don't squander it that's as a company and that's also as a community so with that being said look forward to the Academy get educated get confident in what we have that's the key. Like Marcus said, it get confident in what we have. Because in order to really go out and make a difference in other people's lives, you have to know what you're talking about and you have to be confident in what you're saying. So with that being said, we're gonna unmute everyone. Um Done. we're gonna unmute everyone and we're gonna say good night. Ask all good to morning. unmute. Ah, good morning, good night. And we guys good see you guys. Good morning from Malaysia. Good night. Thanks for everything that you do. Excited. Excited. God bless you guys.